How's it going everybody and welcome back to our NSXT series where we are building out the data center. So far we have built everything that you see on our screen. It was a pretty straightforward process and already everything's where we needed it to be. The next step that we're going to go through and do is from our domain controller here, from our jump box, I'm going to log into a couple of these devices and I'm going to do the uh, the networking that we would need to do in vCenter just to show you guys what that would look like in order to facilitate those processes and then go through how that would actually work. So with the, that being said, let's go ahead and dive into that process. So I'm going to go and pull up our RDP session, which is right here. I'm going to come over here type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash DC1 dash ESXi1 dot NSX dot local. I'm going to go advanced, proceed, and then we'll get this guy. Type in root and then password. I go about that process. So no, I'm not going to join the customer experience improvement program. So right now we've got, we're eval license, we're, um, this is our capability, 16 gigs of RAM, 8 gigahertz of processor. We've got uh, basically 30 gigs of capacity for our storage. So the first thing we need to go do is set up some networks. So on the networking tab, we have a couple of networks. I'm going to start off on standard switches and I'm going to create a new vSwitch. So right now if you were to look at virtual switches, we have one vSwitch, vSwitch 0. And vSwitch 0 has two network adapters, vmnic 0, vmnic 1. We're going to go create two new network uh, networks, uh, switches. We're going to create a virtual switch for um, the one storage array. So essentially what we have to do in order for this to work, you could technically do one switch and two port groups and then have each port group tied to a specific NIC. And that's actually what I'm going to go do because in a vSphere distributed switch, I'm going to create one switch, but multiple port groups, and I'm going to sp specify which uplinks get mapped to which port groups. So let's go ahead and actually do that. So I'm going to add a standard switch. I'm going to call this the SAN switch. The MTU is going to be 9000, and we're going to say VMNIC2, and the security is going to be accept on everything, just to keep things simple. I'm going to go ahead and click add. Now on SAN switch, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an additional uplink. I'm going to choose uplink 3, same capabilities as before. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now I have two network adapters, 2 and 3. Now I'm going to go back to networking. I'm going to create port groups. I'm going to add a port group. I'm going to say SAN 1. VLAN ID is going to be 12. We're going to tie that to V switch, or the SAN switch. Click on add. And then I'm going to go ahead and do add another port group. And I'm going to go ahead and do SAN2, VLAN ID 12, vSwitch. I'm going to move that to SAN switch. I'm going to click on add. Now, if I go back, if I click on here, right, but notice both SAN2 has access to both. And this actually doesn't work. You can't, uh, when it comes to iSCSI and storage array connectivity, you, for every VM kernel adapter, or we have to add a VM kernel adapter to this as well. In order for this to work, you must have one uplink, one physical adapter, one VM NIC mapped to one port group. So what I can do is go click on Edit Settings. Now you'll notice the NIC teaming. I can come down here, and I can go ahead and say override failover order. I can actually take this guy right here and um, for SAN1 and say mark is unused. Right, so it, it's actually not usable. We'll see if that will actually work. I'm not 100% sure that'll actually do the job, but I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to networking. I'm going to go to SAN1. Actually, SAN1. Make sure that I've got the right edit settings. Nick teaming. Okay, yeah, see, VMNIC3, I'm going to mark as unused, save, 
and then we just go back to sand two and make sure that he's correctly defined. Nick teaming. Mark as active, mark as unused. We'll see if that'll work. Now, if this doesn't work, I can always delete the port groups and I can always um, move a nick, remove a nick from a switch and then add it to another V switch. So we'll take a look at exactly how that works. So click back on the networking tab. We're going to go to VM kernel nicks. We're going to add a VM kernel nick. The port group that we're going to map this to is going to be SAN1. We're going to, the MTU of this guy is going to be 9000. The IPv4 settings, we're going to say static. The address here is going to be 172.31.12.11 slash 24 mask and we're going to go ahead and click on create so that creates VM kernel 1 we're going to add another VM kernel we're going to choose the SAN2 static address expand this out be 172.31.12. we're going to say uh, this in the case here, this is going to be 21 and the slash 24 mask. Now you might be asking me, why am I doing 11 and 21? Let me explain basically how this is going to come into play. So you're going to have a tie-in. So you need a active adapter per port group. So in this case here, we go back to the virtual switches and click on sand switch. You can see that we have two adapters. If we actually take the step back here, this guy right here is mapped to this guy, and they're 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 both attached to the same connections, right? Now, the problem that uh, we may run into an issue with this, but in order for this to work the way we need it to, let me go ahead and get out of the way. In order for this to work the way we need it to, we may have to split the we may have to do a um, a v virtual a virtual standard switch to port group mapping where we have each port group in a separate v-switch no big deal if we have to do that essentially what we will end up doing though is you give each guy each beam kernel adapter an IP address because what will end up happening is you can do a load balancing capability so if we come over here to storage we're gonna find out actually right here if this is gonna work we're gonna click on adapters and we're gonna say software iSCSI we're gonna click on enable And then I'm going to go ahead and add port binding. I'm going to say VM kernel one and VM kernel VM kernel one. Select, add port binding, VM kernel two. So I'm going to add both of them in here. I'm going to say add static target. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to remove static target. I want to add dynamic target. The address here is going to be 172.31.12.51 save configuration changes now I'm going to go over here to devices and there it pulled it in so it did work so the changing the network adapters the VM NICs themselves did seem to work if I come over here to um, we can see that the two hard drives are showing up I'm going to click on data stores I'm going to say new data store create new VMFS data store I'm going to go ahead and say SAN1 Click next. We're going to say VMFS5 because FreeNAS doesn't do VMFS6. Chew up all 200 gigs and finish. Yep, the entire contents of this will be erased. That's fine. Give that a couple seconds and then you should see a, another hard drive show up here momentarily. There it is. SAN1 is good to go. We're going to add a new data store. Same process a moment ago. SAN2. Next. VMFS5, next, and finish. Yep, that's fine. And then we're going to go back over here to host, and the host should tell us that we have a total of so much hard drive space. So now we have 432 gigabytes available to us, which essentially is going to be the two 200 hard gig hard drives. So if we come back over here to storage, we can see the hard drive spaces are there. Everything looks pretty good. 
So that's essentially what we needed to do. Now, you can do the same thing on the other devices if you want to, but as you can see, it's a manual process per host. So if you were going to manage a very small environment, you know, two, three, maybe four hosts, I do have a couple of customers that are very small and they have two or three hosts. You can do, you can technically do vMotion with this environment. Um, I'll show you guys actually how to upload an ISO. I'm gonna actually bring up Linux and I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, do the rest of this inside of vCenter, but I wanna, or uh, I'm gonna do ESXi2 as well. And then ESXi3 will join, but we'll do that through vCenter server and then, and then the rest of the servers, because it's, or on the rest of the host through vCenter, because it's just gonna be more, it's smarter to do it that way, because you're gonna have multiple hosts and uh, we'll actually have to, all the networking we just set up, we're gonna have to migrate that from vSphere standard switches to a VDS in order to get that all working. So what I'm actually gonna go do now is on the storage, I'm going to say SAN1. I'm going to go ahead and up uh, data store browser. Now I want to upload a file to this guy. So I'm actually going to quick pause the video. I'm going to um, map the drive. I've actually got to move some files around in order for this to work. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to basically upload some files to the documents tab here and get them locally uploaded. And I'm also going to map a network drive and have those files available to me once everything's squared away. So give me a couple minutes. Um, it'll be a split second for you guys, but I'm gonna upload some files and I'm gonna show you guys how to, to handle all that. All right, so here I've got my Ubuntu image that I'm gonna upload to this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and click on open. And that's going to copy from my physical network into the lab. It'll take a few minutes, as you can see. It's, a, it's about a gig file but I'm going to go ahead and upload that and I'm going to pause until that's completed. Alright, so we've been able to up, upload Ubuntu 1604, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up a tab to DC, or uh, we're going to say HTTPS clone forward slash forward slash dc1-esxi2.nsx.local and do the same thing again, except for I'm going to change things up a little bit and do things a little bit differently than I did in the first, uh, on ESXi 1, just so you guys can see the difference between the two. Nope, I don't want to join that. All right, so essentially what I'm going to do in the networking tab is I'm going to go ahead and create a couple new switches where Eon Post one, I did one V switch with two different port groups, and then I was specific on which particular network adapters were active on a per port group basis, which made things a little complicated, right? I'm gonna do things a little bit differently here. I'm gonna create two V switches. I'm gonna map one network adapter to each V switch and one port group to each V switch. So we're not gonna have to do that active adapter mumbo jumbo. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna click on V switches, add a standard switch. I'm going to call this uh, SAN-switch1, we're going to say 9000, BNIC2 is fine, security, accept everything, and then add, and then I'm going to say add another SAN, another switch, so it's going to be SAN-switch2, 9000, BNIC3, security, same thing, add. All right, so now I'm gonna go to port groups. I'm gonna add a port group. I'm gonna say SAN1, VLAN ID is 12, and I'm gonna say SAN switch one, add. I'm gonna add another port group. This will be SAN2, VLAN 12, SAN switch two, add. Okay, this to me seems a little bit easier in some cases because it's a one-to-one -one mapping versus one switch, two port groups, and then you have to determine which network adapter is active versus uh, not used. I'm gonna go to VM kernel adapters, add VM kernel adapter. I'm gonna say the port group is gonna be SAN1, the IPv4 setting be static, it's gonna be 172.31.12.12 slash 24 mask, and I'm gonna say create. And then add another VM kernel adapter. 
This guy here will be sand two. Static. This will be 172.31.12.22 slash 24. And then create. All right, so now that I've got my adapters squared away. I'm gonna go over here to storage. I'm gonna say adapters, software iSCSI, enabled. Give that a second here. I'm gonna go ahead and say binding. I'm gonna VM kernel one and then VM kernel two. So we can do load balancing. Dynamic target. We're going to say is 172.31.1 or 12.51. Click on save configuration and then click on devices. And then after a short period of time, we may have to do a rescan. There they are. Perfect. Now, what's cool is now that we've already done done the hard part right we've already done the connectivity the way we needed to so I'm gonna go to data stores and eventually it takes a couple minutes we don't actually have to add another data store because on ES6i1 we've already done the data stores right we already created the data stores all we're gonna have to do here if we were to come over here eventually if we go to the host the storage should show up right it's the 400 gig car 400 gigs of capacity shows up we go back to storage, SAN1 and SAN2 now show up, which is what you want to see. Now, if I click on SAN1, go ahead and get out of the way, and I click on Data Store Browser, notice Ubuntu is right here. I didn't upload that from host 2. I uploaded that from host 1. Did I log into the right? That's weird. Why does it say? Maybe I goofed up on the naming convention. Host. Did I make a mistake there? Uh, maybe. Check my DNS. Oh, I did. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to basically have to rename properties here. I'm going to rename this host to. Oh, I can't. I have to. Let me go ahead and delete this guy. Delete. Yes. Add host. It's going to be DC1. I believe is what we're using the convention is. Yeah, DC1 dash ESXi2. And then 172.31.1.12. Add host. Okay. Thought that was kind of weird. Okay, so I'm going to have to go in and make an adjustment. Um, I'm going to actually have to re IP address the VM kernel adapter. So I'm going to go over to networking, VM kernel nix. I'm going to click edit settings and I'm going to make this IPv4 settings. I'm going to make this a 13 and save and the same thing with VM kernel 2 because I want the IP addresses to match. Edit settings and this will be 23 and save because I don't want to have overlapping IP addresses anywhere. Okay, so now they're up to date. Let's go back to storage. Looks like it's still there. Host. Perfect. Okay. Now that's been updated. So I'll have to go into ESXi2 and do that 2, 4, 5, and 6. So not that big of a deal. I'm glad, actually glad I caught that. So now that I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and this is the end of this video so I'm gonna go ahead and in the next video I'm gonna show you guys how to deploy a virtual machine um, from this deployment so we're gonna deploy a Ubuntu VM and we're going to uh, create an additional network so actually since I'm right here let's go ahead yeah I'll go ahead and just do it um, since these hosts let me go ahead and get out of the way the networking tab I'm gonna create another V switch this guy here will be data, new new switch, and I'm going to go ahead and create uh, data, and then security is going to be except for everything, add, 
I'm going to go to pork group, add a pork group, and I'm going to say that this is going to be uh, Linux. The VLAN ID is 100. The V switch is going to be data. Click on add. Okay, and the virtual switch data has one uplink, which is uplink four, which is fine. Um, so we're good to go there. So what I'm going to go do is on the data uplink, technically that should be, actually should be higher up. Data for these guys will be VMNIC 5. So let me go make a quick adjustment on that real quick. So on the data, we're going to say uh, add uplink. I'm going to add uplink 5. I'm going to remove 4 and save that. Just like that. Okay, now that that's, that, that's there, I'm going to do the same thing on DC1. On networking tab, I'm going to go to virtual switches. I'm going to create additional switch. Technically, I don't need to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and say data, and I'm going to use VMNIC 5. VMNIC 4 will be used for um, vMotion. I'm going to accept across the board, add. And then the port group, I will add a port group of Linux, VLAN ID 100, and we're going to map this to the data switch, add. Okay, so what I'm going to go do, and so now that we've got our networking set up for our data as well, I'm going to go ahead and create two VMs, one on each host, and we're going to be able to basically ping back and forth between them. I'm going to set up a DHCP uh, profile on both routers, so regardless of which one's active, we'll be able to get that guy squared away and go from there. So what I'm going to go do from here is, uh, that's the end of this video. I wanted to make sure that I go through and get that all laid out. I'm going to go ahead and in the next video, we're going to go ahead and deploy a VM and see what all that looks like. And then I'll get that up and running because I want to show you guys what it looks like to do both a brownfield and a greenfield de uh, deployment at the exact same time. Because that's typically what I work with. I don't ever work with greenfield. So uh, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have a comment, please leave it in the comment section below. If you haven't already done so, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.